We thank God for the month of March. This is our second Sunday in the month of March, and we give God praise for the fourth man in the fiery furnace in the name of Jesus. That is our theme for this month. And we give God praise for his goodness and for his loving kindness. We thank God for our pastor and our pastor's wife. Uh, they will be returning tomorrow from Nigeria and I'll arrive here on Tuesday. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. If you really want to clap for the Lord for how he has kept them all this while. And they will arrive safely in the name of Jesus. Their flight will take up and it will land in the name of Jesus. Safely for that matter in the name of Jesus. The Lord himself is he that keeps us. Our hearts go out to all the people that lost their lives in the plane crash in Ethiopian airline. About 157 people altogether. That plane took off six minutes after it took off. It did not land. It crashed right there in Ethiopia, in Addis Ababa, on its way to Kenya. About 33 nationals are on board. You know, brethren, each day that we wake up, you know, and we are alive and well, and we end up in the night sleeping on our beds, we need to thank God. Can you worship God and give him all the praise for safety that he grants us every day? I keep telling people that when people ask me, why are you always smiling? I tell them that, look, I woke up. I am alive. <laughs> Hello. Hello. See, there is no other reason why I am joyous and I'm happy every day, but for the fact that I woke up <laughs> this morning, I am alive and well. It is he that is alive that wears shoes. Is he that is alive that wears suits? Is he that is alive that drives cars? Is he that is alive and well that lives in a house? If you are alive, thank God. If you are well, give God praise. We must worship God. By the way, that's not our topic this morning in the name of Jesus. But we need to thank God. We need to worship him on a daily basis. That God keeps and protects us. Our topic this morning, we'll be looking at the fourth man in the fiery furnace. Is the theme for the month. And today, we'll be taking part one of that theme. And our topic, you know, narrowed down to this very part one, is united in faith. Praise the Lord. United in faith. That is our topic this morning in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. We're going to take our text from the book of Daniel. I really thank our beloved pastor once again for the opportunity to stand here to minister to you. I give him all the, I give God all the glory and I say thanks for this opportunity. Daniel chapter 3 verses 19 to 23. Daniel 3 19 to 23. I read from the New King James Version. The Bible says, Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that the heat of the furnace, seven times more than it was usually heated, that it should be heated up. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor, who were in the army, to bind Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and cast them into the, into the burning fairy furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and they were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those <laughs> men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fairy furnace. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words in the name of Jesus. The king was so annoyed. He was so annoyed with these Hebrew boys who will not obey his command, who will not listen to what he has command that he has given that they heated the fire so much that the people that threw them in fire consumed them you can imagine how hot this furnace was what was it that was significant about what happened to these people these boys were united praise the lord hello they were united they held one purpose they held one stand they were not ready they were not going to be intimidated 
And our topic this morning, like we heard last week, <laughs> these men were all what? They were friends of God. Our music director did so well and gave a wonderful sermon here on Sunday, teaching us about the friends of God. Praise the Lord. And he took us on three categories of the friends of God. How many of us will still remember? The perfect friend, the striving friend, and the non-friend. I don't know which kind of friend you are, but I am here to introduce you once, to, once again, the three Hebrew boys who were what? Who were the perfect friend of God. They were perfect friend of God and they were united, praise the Lord. They were together. They were not separated in the name of Jesus. They were united in faith. They were not divided. In different relationships, situations that we have today, we need to be united in faith. Praise the Lord. Hello? Hello? If we must do exploits, if we must stop the hand of the devil, if we must accomplish great things, then we must be united as people of God. We must be united in our different relationships. Husband and wife can be united in faith in the name of Jesus. Brethren can be united in faith. A church can be united in faith. A nation can be united in faith. The power of unity in faith brings in God's divine presence. It does. It can quench the scorching heat of a fiery furnace. Praise the Lord. Hello. Apart from the fact that these Hebrew boys were friends of God, they were united in faith. Praise the Lord. They were of one mind. They were of one spirit. They spoke one word. They believed one thing. They were not divided. In their camp, you wouldn't see anyone moving from one direction and then the other to another direction. From our text, you will discover that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were united in faith to experience God's deliverance when they faced the danger of the fiery furnace and the threat to their lives. God intervened in their situation and showed up as the fourth man in the fiery furnace because they were what? They were united in faith. In the face of adversity, they were united more than ever. Unfortunately, today, what happens is that when people are faced with problems, when brethren are faced with problems, when husband and wife are faced with problems, they, they end up in quarrels, fights, divisions, rather than they coming together at such times and attack the devil and face the enemy that is against their relationship. What is it better to do when you are facing a very difficult situation than for you to unite with your wife if you're married or your husband if you're married? It's unfortunate that today it is those times that people will get so worked up that <laughs> fight begins, quarrel begins between husband and wife. That's very unfortunate. And it shouldn't be in the name of Jesus. We should be united. When we started the fasting in, in, in January, specifically on the 11th, there was an issue that I had in my company. I normally provide services for oil servicing companies in Nigeria, both here and abroad. I was prov providing service for a company up to, up to a quarter of a million dollars as the materials that I was to supply to them. Almost more than a quarter of a million. That was a lot of money. I prepared these goods and I was to ship it out of the country and the custom seized it. They seized it or they detained it. They called it detention, they detained it. Throughout the period of the fasting, that vehicle, those, those Vehicles were held by the customs. They said it was not going to go and that um, they were investigating the process for my shipping out the, the vehicle. That was a lot of money for my business and for me to have problems with that, it would have really affected a whole lot of stuff. I didn't panic. One thing I held on was that I had a wife who could join hands with me. Brethren, there is nothing like when you are in problems or situations 
that you have somebody that you can hold hands with and be united with in prayers and pray about a situation. It was a very, very trying period for me. Throughout the period of our fasting and prayers, I prayed, or me and my wife, we prayed. First day, second day, third day, one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And you know by this time, your clients will start calling you. <laughs> What's going on? What about our goods? What about the things that you have to send to us? One month passed. The whole of January passed. I went, we got into February. I was still coming to pray, you know. But there was fire on the mountain. There was a fiery furnace. But my wife held on with me. Praise the Lord. We prayed and believed God and said, Lord, Father, turn this situation around. Turn this situation around. February 27th. Oh, Jesus, we give you praise. <laughs> February 27th, I got a call from custom. I said, look, your goods are released. Come right now. If you want to see, you want to. <laughs> Brethren, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Here. This was one issue in my business that had actually almost, it, it affected my disposition for the first time ever. You know, when I tell you that, whether anything is going on, it doesn't bother me. This one bothered me. <laughs> oh, he did. It was serious funness. Because what will I say to clients on quarter of a million? Where am I going to start from? But the Lord released those goods in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Brethren, who you stand with and you are united with when you are in issues matters. If you are a husband and you have a wife, hold hands with her. Pray concerning your situation. And that situation will be turned around in the name of Jesus. There is power in unity. Especially when there is faith applied to it in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Those goods were released. And we are in the process of shipping them out right now. If you have a spouse. I don't know, but the Lord told me this morning that he's going to mend relationships. He's going to mend relationships that are in big problems right now. Look, it's a torture. I don't know. I don't know how, you know, you will be married and your wife or your husband is not your best friend. Because that's the closest person you can talk to when you have issues. That's the only person you can run to most of the time, apart from God himself, after you have prayed, and you need somebody to support you. I didn't tell anybody about this, apart from my wife. But she stood by me. We prayed and we looked up to God, and God answered us in the name of Jesus. This morning, if there are issues that are limiting the process of you being able to join hands and join faith with your spouse. The Lord will sort it out today in the name of Jesus. The Lord will make amends in the name of Jesus. Because it helps. It helps when you have somebody you could hold hands with and say, let us pray. Let us hold hands. Let us trust God together. Let's look up to God together. By the way, I want to say thank you, my beloved wife. God bless you. As she walked, help me celebrate her as well. She just turned 50. <laughs> she turned 50 on Thursday. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are a blessing indeed in the name of Jesus. You need to have a good wife, I'm telling you. Or you need to have a good husband if you're a lady. When you are married, it, 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 adds, it adds life to your life. If you were to live 50, you will live 80. <laughs> if you were to stop at 80, you will get to 100. There is blessing. There is blessing when you have peace in your home. When you know you have a confidence, you have somebody you can be united with in faith to face fairy furnaces that we face in this life. There are issues, brethren. There are things that people go through. People may be walking around, you may look as if nothing is going on, but people are going through things. You need that support, you need it. If there are issues 
concerning your marriage today, I, I, I pray to my father today that today, today, the Lord will make it good in the name of Jesus. For you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Fellow believers, fellow brothers, fellow workers in a church or in a group of people are divided in most cases in times of adversities. Instead of being united in their confrontation with the enemy, they are divided. When we were about to start this church, we were confronted with difficulties. The, the, the city told us, look, forget about it. You have 6.2 acres of land, and you have how many, how many members? Six. And you want the whole acres for church? They told us to go, that we are not serious. At all. What are we talking about? Six acres for six people? You won't make up a person. It was a very difficult time. It was a very, very tough. You're laughing now, but it wasn't funny then. It was not. It was a very difficult. We went to the hearing at the city, and they told us completely that it was a no-no, that we should just go away. But we held on unto God in the name of Jesus. As a group, those six people were united. We held hands together and we prayed on a daily basis that God turn the hands of the city, turn the hands of the mayor, turn the hands of the council of the city that they will hear us. Well, you are here today. You are a testimony of what is going on. Praise the Lord. Not only do we have six acres of land now, but this property has been developed into millions of value. It can only be God. And for people who are united and could hold together, believing God for breakthroughs. The Hebrew boys were united in faith, not to submit to King Nebuchadnezzar's demand and threats. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, the Bible says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand O king but if not let it be known to you O king that we do not serve your gods we will worship the gold we will we, nor will we worship the gold image the golden image which you have set up they they were united they believed in one thing they looked up to God nobody broke ranks when you are faced with problems as brethren, as sisters, as brothers in the same church, in a group, we need to believe in what each and every one of us stands for and hold our faith together in the name of Jesus. There is power in unity. Unity enforces the presence of God in our situations. In Deuteronomy 32 verse 30, the Bible says, how could one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight unless their rock had sold them and that the Lord has surrounded them? In Matthew chapter 18 verses 19 to 20, the Bible says, and again I say unto you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that you, they ask of, it will be what? It will be done for them by their Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am what? I am there in their midst. Brethren, do you know it is not in the number? You could be two, you could be three, you could be four. But it is in the name of whom you have gathered. Praise the Lord. Are you gathered in the name of the Lord? Are you united in faith? And you can bring down mountains. You can quench fiery furnaces in the name of Jesus. If you are united... In whose name are you gathering? In whose name have you come together? Is it in the name of the Lord? In whose name is your union? Is it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? When I was in Unilag, I graduated from the University of Lagos in Nigeria, Chemical Engineering Department. But in, um, in my final year, there was an incident that happened that really taught me uh, the value of unity in oneness. We used to have campus fellowships then in University of Lagos, but there was this group, I, I don't know whether they still exist now, but they are called Chris Lamhard. I don't know if you've heard of them before. Their doctrine is this, that Christianity could coexist with Islam and with Habalists. 
<laughs> you could worship the, the Lord as a Christian, worship him as a Muslim, and then worship him as a herbalist. That is, if you bring the three together, it is called Chris Lam Hab. So the, obviously it's a cult. People that do not know God that wanted to bring in about, they wanted to come and establish themselves in the University of Lagos at that moment. So they gathered and they put up a, a flyer on campus those days and said that they were going to start up the fellowship of that particular group on campus in the University of Lagos. So eight of us, eight of us from different fellowships. You know, it didn't matter then whether you belonged to one fellowship or the other. It didn't matter whether you were CU or SU or Deeper Life or Redeem. There was problem. There was fire <laughs> on the mountain in our campus, on our campus. So we gathered together, eight of us. We came from different fellowships. And we came together and we, <laughs> it's like people that bound themselves and said this will not happen. We held hands together and we started waiting upon the Lord. I can't remember how many days then. And we said, this will not happen in this campus in the name of Jesus. The devil will not come and plant a foothold in the University of Lagos. This will not happen. So we prayed, and the day of the program came. Because we were prepared. We, we were resolute. Some of the things we did those days on campus, at times when I remember them, I say, Lord, help me. Thank God that this young man did not lose his life. Because on the day of the establishment of that fellowship, we all got up believing God, holding God, holding hands in unity, in oneness of heart as a group. And we went to the hall. We entered and we went and sat. Three of us were selected. Those days I liked going, doing, being in the forefront. <laughs> I told them, yes, I'm number one. Please, I need to go in. So they selected three. <laughs> three out of us, out of eight of us. And then the remaining five stayed outside and they were praying for us. So that we can go and confront this group and ask them to leave our campus. You know, that was a very dangerous thing. And they, we had already been told that this guy, that whenever he hits people with his hand, they'll go mad. That he's a very dangerous person. I say, if our God will not deliver us, then I don't know what, who else that will deliver us. But in this campus, this will not happen. So we entered. Long story short. We entered that program, sat in the audience, and things started going wrong. All of a sudden, this is a crusade that they had already planned. And normally when those crusades happen, this guy, I've forgotten his name, he's the founder of that organization, he would do miracles. You know, based on the miracles that he do, physical miracles, people will believe, and then they will initiate them to the occult group, which is an occult group, obviously. That's not a Christian group. That is not any group to watch it that has any respect for God. But everything went bad that day. He came up on stage. He could not perform any miracle. He got up from the stage. He came into the congregation, came to where we were sitting. He said, there is power in this hall. There is power that is disturbing my... There, is, there, are, there are people, they should... I said, do all that you can. Today is your last day here. If that was not enough, when he went back to stage, one of us got up and went to the stage, took the mic from me. I said, this is your time to get out of this campus. It was pack your load and go. At this moment, they realized that, look, this is not a laughing matter anymore. He called off the meeting and moved out of campus and canceled a three-day crusade on the first day. <laughs> Brethren, it's not only because of anything, but some group of young, young Christians came together in oneness, in unity of faith, in unity of faith, and held hands together and said, this evil will not happen in our campus. As a church, we can be united in faith in the name of Jesus. As a group, we can be united. As churches, we can be united in faith. And we can do exploits in the name of Jesus. When we are united in faith. Husband and wife, when they sit down to discuss, in whose name are they discussing? Are they discussing in the name of the law? Or is it in the name of argument, pride, resentment, frustration, or anger, disunity and disagreement they are discussing it? A lot of times when we have problems and we are trying to solve it as husband and wife or as groups of people, it's to quarrel. Oh, you didn't do it right. You, and the devil will be smiling and be rejoicing. Rather than us to put aside all our differences or what we don't agree or what we do not agree, join hands together and call upon the Almighty God to change our situation. The three Hebrew boys 
were not divided. The Tower of Babel, notwithstanding, was built, notwithstanding that the Lord himself did not agree with what they were doing. But because they were united in faith, they could do what they did. The Bible says that in Genesis 11 verse 6, and the Lord said, indeed the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them anymore. Even when what they were doing was not God's will, but because of unity, because of oneness, because of they speaking one language, holding on to one thing, they could not be stopped. God had to change their language <laughs> to be able to dismantle them. You know, when I read that story, I keep wondering. I say, well, God is able to do all things, correct? He could have just sent fire to consume the building. But he didn't do that. He wanted to teach us a lesson. He wanted to teach us through scriptures that when we are united, we are unstoppable in the name of Jesus. The only thing God could do was to bring about disunity among those people and then he could dis disengage them. He had to make them not understand one another. So there was no more unity and they could not build anymore. Although without the support of God, yet they succeeded. Imagine how much more we can do and accomplish as believers when we are united in faith in the name of Jesus. When we are doing God's will and we are accomplishing his purpose. In Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, the Bible says that if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land in the name of Jesus. Unity is of great importance in our different relationships as we journey through life. There is, is so much important that our Lord Jesus Christ, that when he rose from the dead, he went up to heaven and he prayed. Before he went up to heaven, he prayed for his disciples this prayer. In John chapter 4, 17, I read from verses 20 to 23. I do not pray for this alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that all may be one as you. Father, that as you and, and my father are in me and I in you, that also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and that the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I and them and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me as you have loved them. In Psalms 133, the Bible says, Be Lord, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head, flowing down, running down the beds, even Aaron's bed, that went down to the skirts of his garment, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew had descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded his blessing, even life evermore. Praise the Lord. What made it easy? For the Hebrew boys for them to be united in faith I'll take three things and we'll be ready to pray this morning uh, because of my time I'm gonna take this quickly and we are will be ready to pray what are the factors that promoted the unity they had in faith humility and unselfishness is number one humility you need humility if unity must exist if people must be united together, there must be what? Humility, unselfishness. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourself, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives what? Grace to the humble. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible says, Let nothing be done through self, selfish ambition or consign. But in loneliness of mind, let every esteem others better than himself. We used to have a pastor who started worshiping in this church for a period of time. He was a pastor. You know, then I was still a worker. So, my brother. So, pastor, uh, and all along, pastor, 
put me in this very, very, uh, at times, difficult situation as the assistant pastor for the church. Because, I mean, I wasn't ordained then. I wasn't, I mean, so the, the pastor came and pastor traveled and he gave us assignments. And he was to teach on one of the evenings. So I approached him and I said, ah, pastor, with good, re with respect, serious respect, I, I, I respected him. And I said, pastor, please, uh, pastor said that, please, you will help to teach us in the evening. He said, what? How can I? that just an uh, ordinary worker be telling him, a whole pastor, of what to do. I say, sorry, sir, but that was what Pastor Badru said. He said, well, how can Pastor Badru do that? That how can you yourself even be here? How can you be serving and fulfilling somebody's vision and mission and commission when your own mission and, mi and commission is there? <laughs> that was... <laughs> That was my first time of hearing that. I never knew I was actually fulfilling Pastor Badru's mission and commission <laughs> by serving the Lord in his house. Somebody believed that when you serve God in, in God's house, you are actually fulfilling the senior pastor's mission and commission. It's an unfortunate place to be. If you are a believer or a worker or a minister, and when you are working in church, or doing God's work, you think that you are fulfilling the pastor's mission? Oh my God. You are here to serve God. You are here to fulfill God's purpose for your life. We are not here to serve Pastor Badru. He's a set man put here by God to oversee what happens here, to give direction, and we all follow and accomplish God's purpose for our lives. That's all. I was shocked. I said, Pastor, sorry, please, be, uh, be, don't be annoyed. I take back what I said, that don't teach again, please. But, <laughs> but it was Pastor Badru that said, please, that you should help teachers. That is what pride, pride and selfish ambition could do, even in the house of God. Because for him, he needed a place where he could set up his own domain and then his own church. But if he did anything in King's Palace, he was serving Pastor Badru. He was accomplishing his mission and his purpose. I must move on, praise the Lord. May the Lord help you to understand in the name of Jesus that when you serve God in God's house, you are fulfilling God's purpose for your life in the name of Jesus. We should humble ourselves even when we walk. If there to be unity, if we must accomplish and break through, through unity in faith, we must be humble. We must throw away selfish ambitions and hold on to God. Number two, submission to God. James chapter four, verses seven to 10, submission to God. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, and you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded, lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up in the name of Jesus. The Hebrew boys submitted to the Lord. They knew God. If unity must walk in faith, then you must know him that you have faith in. You must submit to him. We must submit to God. We must give our lives to him. Maybe today you are not even saved. By the grace of God, we will have time to pray with you. There is nothing that is as important as submitting ourselves to God. It's when we submit to God that we can resist the devil and he can flee from us. That is when we can quench fiery furnaces in the name of Jesus. We have to submit ourselves to the Lord. Submission to one another, number three. Submission to one another. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 to 24. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit your, to your own husbands as the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church of, and his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husband. 
Brethren, take note that the very first verse there in verse 21 talks about what? Submitting to one another. There is something that is called we submitting to one another. You know, when we walk together, you don't have to always lead all the time. Hello? Hello? We can do what? Submit to one another. When we go for missions in this church, Pastor Badri is not in charge. I hope you know. When we go for missions, we leave this place. You know, Uncle Jide Afolabi is not here because he has gone for one outreach or the other because he leads our outreach team. He stipulates what happens. In fact, we wake up in the morning, we take instructions from him. If he needs any help or direction from pastor, he consults with him privately, but he comes out and gives us the instructions on what to do. When we go for our children's vacation, Mommy Shade is in charge, praise the Lord. Oh my God, you better line up. <laughs> oh, you better line up with Mommy Shade. When we go for children's vacation, to all the children vacations that we go, we take instructions from Mommy Shade. If she says sit, you sit. You better behave yourself. So we can submit to one another. For unity to have effect, we have to submit to one another. Imagine if the Hebrew boys, all of them were arguing among themselves, who is going to lead, who is going to talk, when they are asked and all of all that. That was not mentioned here, but they answered with one voice. And the Lord intervened for them in the name of Jesus. We must submit to one another if unity must take its foothold. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, the Bible says, Obey those who have rule over you and be submissive, for they watch over your soul as those who must give account. Let them do, with, do it with joy and not with grief, for that will be unprofitable unto you. I like the way the English Standard Version puts it, and I read Hebrews 13, 17, English Standard Version. Obey your leaders, submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will what who will give an account let them do this with joy and not with groaning for that will be of no advantage to you when you have leaders over you submit to them obey them look brethren i may be called the assistant pastor of this church but when he gets to who is my pastor, it's Pastor Badru. He is my personal pastor. He is the person in charge of things that happen here. I don't care what the instruction is. Before I will ask pastor why, I will obey that instruction. I can ask him, sir, can you clarify how we need to do this? I could make suggestions. I could advise him but I will not insist on those advice. Hello? That is the difference from somebody who is submissive and who is not submissive. You could have, I'm not saying we should be robots. None of us, who is a robot here? None. But even if you have a suggestion, an advice, it is a suggestion. It is an advice. You could make that suggestion, give that advice. It is left to the person you're giving the advice to take it or to reject it. But you know what we do is that when we give advice and suggestions, we're actually telling the person what you want to happen. And when it doesn't happen, it becomes a problem. There is no way unity will thrive in that kind of atmosphere. Check it anywhere. And that is why most of the times people break away from one church to the other because people can't sit under somebody else's leadership and take instructions and work together to conquer nations in the name of Jesus and stop the scorching fairy furnaces that we could face. We could do much more, brethren, if we can work together and submit to authority, submit to leadership. I'll tell you the truth, 
Pastor Barry listens to me on a lot of things. In fact, at times when he's even running some things with me, I say, Pastor, you don't need to, <laughs> you don't need to run this one with me. Don't go ahead. Let's do, do it. He even humbles me at times when he, because you know why? He knows that when he talks to me, he, I am not going to impose myself on any instructions that he's giving. I am going to listen first of all, think about it, even if I have an advice, I advise, but I will not oppose unnecessarily, oppose unnecessarily, except he's asking me to sing, but God forbid, I know Pastor Badru will never ask me to go and sing. What do you gain when your head of department is saying this is what we need to do? And then you oppose and stand against and remember whatever you sow you're going to reap. No wonder most times when people are then leading they are our opposition because you've sown. You've sown disobedience. You've sown insubordination and they are reaping it. I'm enjoying my wonderful work here. I tell you. I tell you the truth. I look forward to waking up every morning. I don't know about you, but I am fulfilling purpose here in the name of Jesus. And I will do it unto the, to God's glory till he calls me home in the name of Jesus. We must submit to leadership, to authority. Finally, as I wrap up and I close this morning, recognize that God is always there with you in whatever you are going through. He doesn't just show up when you need him, but he's always there in the name of Jesus. God didn't just show up in the fear of Do you know he was always with the Hebrew boys? Jesus was with the Hebrew boys even before they got into the fiery furnace. It is not only when they threw them into the fiery furnace that he showed up. Do you know? He just showed up just to assure them again, look, I am with you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I am with you. I am with you. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things. I'm reading Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Be content with such things that you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you, nor what, nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is our helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. Deuteronomy 31, 6 and 8. The Bible says, 6 to 8. 6 to 8. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he's the one who goes with you. He will not what? He will not leave nor forsake you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him, in the sight of all his people, be strong and of good courage. For you must go with these people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give to them. And you shall cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. Praise the Lord. The Lord goes before you in the name of Jesus. He will be with you. He will not leave nor forsake you in the name of Jesus. Do not fear nor be dismayed in the name of Jesus. Shall we rise? Let's rise on our feet this morning. That's my last counsel to you. The Lord will not leave nor forsake you. The Lord will be with you in the name of Jesus. All the way, even in the midst of the fiery furnace, he will be there with you in the name of Jesus. I want you to open up your mouth and pray unto God. Lift up your hands and pray to God this morning. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, help me to always recognize. Remember that and remember that you are with me. That you will never leave nor forsake me in Jesus' name. Pray, brethren. Pray, ask that Lord that I will recognize God is always there. He's there, it's just that we do not recognize it. He showed up, he showed up as the fourth man in the fairy furnace so that he will remind them again, I'm here. <laughs> I have been here always. I'm always with you. He was there. You think he just showed up then? Jesus was always with them. He has been with them. He just sh showed up to show them a sign that look, don't be afraid, I am here with you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Oh God, in all my relationships, help me to humble myself and to forsake unselfishness in all situations, at all occasions, in Jesus' name. Lord, help me in all my re relationships to humble myself. Help me to do away with unselfishness. Help me, Lord. 
Help me to be submissive to leadership, to authority. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Number three, oh Lord, I submit completely to you in all areas of my life. And I obey you to obey you always at all occasions in the name of Jesus. Brethren, I want us to open up our mouth and pray. Ask the Lord to help you, to help you to completely submit to him in all ways. You need to submit to the Lord. If unity must strive in any group that you belong, you must submit to God. It's when people submit to God that they can submit to one another. It's when people submit to God that things will happen. Situations can change. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Number four, Father, help me to submit to those who have rule over me. I want you to open up your mind and say after me, Father, help me to submit to those who have rule over me. My leaders, and to always pursue unity in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. Ask that the Lord will help you today. That he will see you through in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we thank you, God, for today. We worship and we exalt your holy name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We magnify you for your goodness and for your loving kindness. Thank you for your word once again today. Help us to be submissive to you. Help us to submit to one another. Help us, O oh God, Jehovah, to be humble, O oh God, and do away with unselfishness in our relationships. Help us, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name.